Hi, uh, I'm Tim O'Reilly. I'm here backstage at the Web2 Summit with uh, Sergey Brin. Hi, Tim. Pleasure Hi. to be here with you. Good. I wanted uh, to talk about data beyond Google's uh, core business of advertising and uh, search. And I was sort of forced into thinking about this when you first announced your autonomous vehicle. And there were a number of people who said to me, what does this have to do with Google's business? Why are they doing this? Uh, can you maybe just reflect <laughs> on that a little bit? Why are I would you doing say that? At a high level, we're doing it because we can and because I think it'll really affect the world uh, dramatically. Mm -hmm. If you think about the problem of transportation, there's so many people who are disabled, uh, too young, too old to drive. Um, they just can't get around. This is a big issue for them. Yeah. And many of us others, if we look at urban congestion, which is caused by you know, cars that aren't managed as well as they could be by the parking they have to take right. because they can't just drop you and take off or be shared broadly because they have to be driven by people. Um, this is a, a big problem for people and it costs lives. I mean, they're just accidents. It costs tremendous time and it, and it costs uh, opportunities for people. So when you say because we can, what is it about Google that makes it possible for you to do that? And what, particularly, what lessons are there for people in other industries who are saying, you know, I want to do this kind of stuff too? So I would say it's a hard technical problem. It uh, requires some long-term investment and development. Um, there's a lot of processing, a lot of data, as you say, that goes on. Mm -hmm. um, but we already feel quite confident that we can do it. Uh, even starting with, uh, first of all, the folks who worked for us previously uh, won the DARPA Grand Challenge, as, right. uh, as you know. Uh, then we did had a project uh, where we had them drive a thousand miles uh, without intervention, mm -hmm. and they were a challenging thousand miles, and mm -hmm. it was done successfully. Um, and uh, putting together all of that, putting together the car control systems, the sensor systems, and all the processing it yeah. takes to understand that. Um, putting that all together uh, is something that you know we feel we actually right. have the resources to do. So in terms of big areas that uh, are googly, uh, one of them seems to me to be healthcare, and yet you guys pull back on Google Health. Are you going to go back into healthcare in some new way? <sighs> you know, healthcare, uh, is obviously very important, yeah. and uh, I don't know if you saw. <laughs> my my wife is working obviously yeah, in, in sure. healthcare, and she cares about it. Uh, but it's uh, as much a kind of a policy, yeah, a regulatory kind of question uh, as it is a technology one. I mean, ultimately, if you think about even things like electronic medical records, they're tiny amounts of data by any reasonable standards. Right. I mean, compared to say Gmail. Right, but there's still sort of this and similar idea of, of evidence that get, creates feedback loops, potentially. I, I was talking with somebody at GE recently, and they were talking about the change in the paradigm that needs to happen in medicine from, uh, you know, you do diagnosis and then you do treatment to you're continually doing diagnosis. You go along to see if what you were doing worked, and that's a lot more like the way the web works. And so these, these sort of feedback loops I, in I data. think that's true, and yeah. perhaps we should participate, but there yeah. are tremendous... Uh, I think uh, national and international policy issues with healthcare in terms of, right. you know, who pays, where the incentives are lined up, what are the regulatory barriers. I, I just had dinner just with somebody yesterday who's in the healthcare space, and they were trying to um, uh, digitize their hospital, as mm -hmm. and you know, have the doctors enter electronic records rather than handwritten, sure. and. Uh, it turned out it was all taking, it really killed their productivity because the doctors were actually filling everything out instead of like the patients. Like they wouldn't let the patient yeah. type in, well, I have this, this, and this is my age. The patient would have to speak to a doctor. The doctor would type that all in. And for some complicated set of regulatory policy issues, they didn't feel like they could let the patients do it themselves. Gotcha. So, so there's, we, some, there's some barriers to be removed before you can Yeah, really, I think once yeah. you start... Uh, and I mean, that's not to say that you know we would never do anything in health, yeah. but I think that it's. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that healthcare is primarily a technology issue at this point. Yeah, yeah, or at least that part of it. You said you're working on research projects. 
any of them you're willing to, to share <laughs> um, any tidbits about? Let me see. I, I, I think there's one that I, not, not quite yet, but give me toward the end of the year, there's one uh, of them that, uh, that will probably come out. Um, <laughs> sorry, there's not much. All but, right, uh, okay. Well, I, you'll I, see I, one I, of the I, existing I Google ask. products, I think, adopt one of them in the next, uh, before the end of the year. All right, great. Uh, switching real quickly to Plus, I'm a huge Plus fan. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you use it. Yeah, I mean, I was really kind of surprised myself because as I told uh, John there on stage, um, I'm not a heavy social network user, and yeah. yet I found myself pretty quickly, you know, kind of uh, addicted. My uh, my wife was complaining, get off of Google Plus. And I was, <laughs> you know, because I was just uh, having fun posting both publicly as well as sharing to individual circles, kind of all different sizes. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, for me, that sort of that granularity of sharing, the flow, the way... Now, um, I love the way you can share with a circle and you can just add individuals by email address and yes. they're all kind of, they don't have to be on plus in order yeah, to... Yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly a key yeah. use case that I don't think pe many people realize. Maybe we should make it clearer, a little yeah. more clear. But, you know, I go on a trip with a bunch of people, take a bunch of pictures, and want to share it with them. Whether they're plus users or not, I just put them in a circle and I share it with them. Right, Or, exactly. or as individuals and they get it. Uh, via email then, which yeah. is really And nice. so I, I think there's some hidden virality in Plus that's going to show up over time. Yeah. And uh, I, well, I, I just love it because of the level of engagement. You know, when I post something, I get in great conversations with people. And, you know, I use it in the same way I use Twitter a lot, which is a lot of public posts. Uh, but where I would normally tweet and I, there's no room to comment, I can actually say a little bit about why I'm posting this, what I think yeah. about it. And then, uh, you know, and then I actually use it with Twitter. I'll then point rather than the original post, I'll point to my plus commentary. And it's a really virtuous circle. It's working really well for me in, in, as a social media tool. Yeah, um, so, you know, so I'm optimistic, uh, you know, and... Um, you just have a lot, the, the level of scrutiny is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, but I, you know, it certainly feels good to me when we've developed something that I find so valuable personally. Yeah, yeah I think so too. Well, thanks very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking the time.